So guys, as you just saw, I finally have surpassed 300,000 miles in the old bean machine, my 2002 Outback LL Bean Edition with the three liter EZ30D engine in it. Now this car basically started this channel as the majority of my early repair videos were on this vehicle. Now back two years ago, almost two years to the date, Back in September of 2020, I did a video breaking down cost of ownership from purchasing the car all the way up to, at the time, 296,000 miles in late September of 2020. Now, I'll post a link to that video if you want to stop the video here and go watch that video. I go over everything associated with from purchase price, all the parts put into it to get it from 231,000 miles when I purchased it to 296,000 miles. Obviously, I do not drive the car very much anymore, and I really hate that fact, but it has become kind of an emergency backup vehicle for if we have issues in the family with any of our vehicles. My brother was just using it recently when he had the issues with the radiator in his 2011 Outback. My mother has driven it whenever her Chevy Cruze has gone down. It's kind of our little safety net emergency car when someone needs something to drive. So, again, I really hate that it has to sit so much, but primarily I'm driving my Crosstrek or my Duramax Dually. That's my two main vehicles right now since I sold off the Subaru Sandbar. And that was one of the reasons I sold the Sandbar. It became one of those uh, just never got driven vehicles. So anyway, let's do a little bit of history really quickly on this car for those of you that haven't seen the previous video, those of you that are new viewers, and those of you that have uh, no familiarity with this car. So this is a 2002 Outback LL Bean Edition, which means it has a three liter EZ 30D six cylinder boxer engine. I purchased it back in August, September of 2013 for $500. When I purchased the vehicle, it had 231,000 miles on it. Now, backstory, this car was brought to me at my shop. It had a cracked radiator. Now, this car had been quite abused for its ownership under the previous owner. When they brought it to me, as I said, cracked radiator. They had split the radiator and drove it home uh, a good 30 miles, stopping and topping up and overheating it and just, you know, bad news. So brought it to me, I put a radiator in it. Once I put the radiator in it, I found out the head gaskets were blown. Uh, and that's not due to an inherent issue with the EC30D Subaru Boxer engines, et cetera. It was the fact that 231,000 miles and drove for an extended period of time overheating, cooked the head gaskets. Now, once I got the head gasket diagnosis, looking around the car a little bit more, trying to figure out, you know, what all the car actually needed to get a bill ready for the customer on what we we're gonna do. I found out that we had a spun rod bearing and a rod knock as well. Now, it was a very light rod knock. You didn't hear it till you got up about 2,500, 3,000 RPM. And the main source of that was it was extremely low on engine oil. It had massive oil leaks from the cam covers, massive oil leak at the oil pan, and the whole front bottom part of the timing chain cover was leaking oil. They just did not ever check up on the oil level or the coolant level. They ran it hot. They did not get repairs done when needed. These major oil leaks and uh, you know the car was just neglected and that's what happens when you don't take care of them. So was going to need an engine replacement no matter what at that point between the cooked head gaskets and the spun rod bearing. They did not want to pay to fix the car. I offered them $500 for the car and that is how I took ownership of the bean machine. So what has happened since the last video as far as money put into the car, as far as repairs? Very, very minimal. The only thing that we've had happen was just in the last few months over the summertime. And I made a video covering this and that was the alternator gave out, the one that I rebuilt in 2014, finally gave out in 2022. And uh, luckily, I had been to the local pull-apart in Charlotte and found a brand new Subaru original Mitsubishi alternator that's like almost $500 on a white LL Bean. 
and I picked it up for a cool $25. So uh, that was a major score. I mean, it was mint condition. So we have a brand new OE, almost $500 alternator on the car now. And then the battery died because the battery was probably from 2014 as well and way past its life expectancy. So we put a $25 uh, junkyard brand new alternator on it and we put a battery in it that I think was ballpark $100. So we're gonna add $125 to the total from the previous video to give us a running tally from purchase to 300,000 miles. Also, I guess we can put in about 40 bucks for an oil change cause we're about to change the oil on it. So guys, unfortunately I don't have any more H6 oil filters. I kind of ran my stock low after I sold my 3.6R. And uh, yeah, so luckily I got one pure later left. And uh, I'm gonna stop at the Subaru dealership this afternoon or in the morning and uh, pick up some more. So yeah, if uh, when you go to change your oil, if you can't just do this, take your oil filter off by hand, uh, you're putting it on too damn tight. So while we're doing the oil change, we might as well start looking and inspecting the engine. We got a little bit of oil seepage, no leakage, just seepage here from the uh, cam cover gasket, from the rear timing chain cover, from the front to rear timing chain cover, and our upper oil pan. Lower oil pan, little bit, but it might be some coming off of uh, this front uh, timing cover area. But other than that, the engine is pretty dry for 200,000 miles on the engine and, uh, you know, 300,000 miles on the chassis. Uh, I did mention in the other video, I put a aftermarket radiator per the customer's request in this vehicle. They didn't want to spring for a Subaru Geon radiator. And uh, that's one reason I hate aftermarket radiators. That petcock has been leaking for uh, several years now on this vehicle. And just a couple drips, but uh, you know, every uh, oil fill up or oil, every oil change or gas fill up, I check the coolant and I have to add a couple of ounces just from that slow leak. But otherwise, uh, we're fairly dry under here. So, again, guys, that's all you need hand tight. You don't need to go out here and uh, act like some 200 pound gorilla hanging off of a set of uh, oil filter pliers or a strap wrench. They don't have to be that tight, guys. Stop over tightening your oil filters, please. So as I said, everything under here is pretty much dry. It's mainly just little bits of seepage. Uh, but if you look right here, we do have a little bit of a wet spot at the bottom of the timing chain cover and the front of the lower oil pan. I can see right there. Um, looking at front suspension components, uh, most of this stuff, you know, has been along for the ride. I'm sure those are original sway bar bushings. They definitely need to be replaced. I'm pretty sure those are original sway bar end links. They need to be replaced. Ball joints, wheel bearings, all that stuff are fairly new along with the inner and outer tie rods. Checked them. They're all tight still, all good. That lower rear control arm bushing probably needs to be replaced. Um, if I remember correctly, these are hydraulic, but I haven't found it leaking, but it does have some play in it. And uh, believe it or not, those are factory Subaru KYB struts, all 300,000 miles on them. And they are 
horrible. This thing's got so much dive, so much squat, and so much body roll driving it. It's insane. Jumping in this from driving my cross trek, I forgot how badly it handled. Uh, you know, when you drive it all the time, you get used to it, but it was just bad. So we need four full struts all the way around, including the top hat, top mounts, all that good stuff. So all four tires are pretty well obliterated. The fronts are really worn out. We got some alignment issues here. And, uh, you know, we need a set of four tires. No uh, ifs, ands, or buts about that. So much drier on this side of the engine. Everything seems to be holding out very well. Here we see those new ATF cooler lines I talked about in the previous video. Yes, this is that chopped down uh, GM 3600 V6 upper radiator hose that I fixed in a parking lot one night years and years ago. It is still on here. I've not replaced it with the correct Subaru hose yet. Uh, we do have a busted inner tie rod boot. But miraculously, this 300,000 mile factory original steering rack is not leaking. There are a lot of original parts still on this car, all 300,000 miles, and you really cannot uh, fault Subaru for how well the engineering went into this generation of Outback. It's why it's one of my favorite Outbacks when I talked about the Outback and Legacy Buyer's Guide. The 2000 to 2004, seems to be, in my opinion, the peak of reliability and engineering for this vehicle. And again, tire on this side, no good. So yeah, other than the uh, sway bar in link, sway bar bushings, uh, inner tie rod boot, and some seepage from the engine, you know, we're pretty much good. Now, talking about the engine, uh, timing chain and timing chain guides. This vehicle does have some timing chain rattle. So uh, we'll need to go ahead and uh, pull the engine out and, you know, go through it. So really, ideally, I'd want to pull the entire engine out and do a full reseal front to back, new head gaskets, go through the timing chain guides, all of that oil pan, rear main seal, just everything completely resealed because this engine is still a very good running engine. We should do a compression and leak down test on it to just see how good it has held up to 200,000 miles. But uh, overall, it's still got plenty of pep in its step. It doesn't smoke, it doesn't burn oil. It's just a great little power plant. In moving back here to the 4EAT transmission, which I don't know why a lot of people give this transmission a lot of hell and say it's unreliable, but this is a factory 300,000 mile for EAT, still humming right along. Now we do have quite a bit of leakage here, and that is from a common source of leakage on the 4 EAT. I don't know if I can show you because the H6 has this Y pipe with these massive catalytic converters that the uh, 2.5 series does not. But uh, right there is a bulkhead connector where the main wiring harness goes through the transmission case into the pan. It's all the wiring to the solenoids in the valve body. There is an O-ring seal around the plastic uh, bung where it goes through the transmission body that dry rots and leaks, and that's exactly where our leak's coming from. It leaks down the side of the transmission case, leaks down this edge of the pan. A lot of people think their pan's leaking because of it, uh, but mostly that is just that O-ring in there. Now you can get just that O-ring, but I gotta caution you, every single one of these I've tried to reseal, the little plastic tabs break off because what you have to do to reseal it is you have to disconnect all the electrical connectors for all the solenoids in the pan, take the wiring harness and push that little plastic piece, which is just a little plastic cup that the harness goes through and it's got little tabs on it. I think it's four little tabs and they are super brittle from heat cycles and age. So a lot of times when you try to push those tabs in to get it to come out of the transmission case, they break off. Now I have had luck in the past, RTV 
uh, silicone on the O-ring around it and sticking it back in the transmission, but that would not be advisable. So the majority of the time, as long as you can still get them from Subaru, I haven't ordered one in a while, you're gonna get to have to get a new transmission harness, which isn't cheap for one O-ring. It sucks, but if you wanna keep your transmission dry, keep all this uh, leakage here at bay, uh, that's what it's gonna take, unless you are extremely careful, and I jokingly say that because no matter how extremely careful you are, that plastic is brittle and can snap with uh, little effort at all. If you haven't gotten yourself one of these Subaru oil funnels, uh, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's one of the best things ever. And uh, Fram hate comments, well aware, but uh, I've always used Advanced Auto Parts brand oil, just the bulk stuff I get through my commercial account. And uh, when they bought CarQuest, they went from Advanced Auto to CarQuest, and now for some reason they have gone to Fram branding on their engine oil. Never use a Fram oil filter, but the oil, I'm pretty sure it's all coming out of the same place and it's just a different sticker on it. And uh, now with the diehard batteries back at Advance as well. So guys, I just went through and uh, removed another shim from the AC compressor clutch. We did a video on that in the past because I was having issues where it didn't want to always engage. There's our brand new high dollar Mitsubishi alternator. But here's another thing. I've been hearing a wobbling rotational noise in the front of the engine and I uh, finally figured out what it is. If you look right there, if the camera will focus, focus camera, whoop. See right there, the uh, harmonic balancer is coming apart. That rubber there is uh, separated and uh, there's a big chunk missing. And it's actually been rubbing against the uh, timing cover there. So guys, here we are, old balancer is off and it is good and well destroyed and uh, it ate the uh, front aluminum timing cover up quite a bit. Luckily it didn't, you know, go through it. Looks like it uh, put some heat in there and cooked our front crank seal. And that's where our oil leak has been coming from. The one we saw down below on the front of the timing cover. So yeah, gonna try to clean this up really quickly and uh, install a good used balancer. Well, that's all replaced and happy again. So moving on to the back, sway bar, end links, and bushings probably need to be replaced. Uh, the upper arm there, we've replaced those because the bushings failed a while back. Uh, our trailing arm bushings probably need to be replaced as well as these lateral links here. Uh, I believe the rear differential bushings are, uh, you know, past their lifespan. And uh, other than that, really, uh, our only issue is our exhaust. That is uh, barely hanging on at that connection right there. And uh, the weird little butterfly valve in the H6, this little cap has been loose and rattling for uh, years and I'm not exactly sure what that does. I think it's some kind of bypass for uh, this loop here in the muffler, but uh, not familiar with the operation of it. But other than that, we're pretty clean under here. A little bit of surface rust. Other than that, not bad for a 2002 with 300,000 miles on it. So before we get to the final thoughts and the price breakdown, I almost forgot to film the outside and inside of the vehicle. Now I haven't washed it and I haven't detailed or cleaned the interior. This is just how it's been the last couple of months. It's probably been uh, four or five months since I've actually washed it. Uh, but this is it. This is a 300,000 mile, 20 year old vehicle. We changed and put JDM headlights with uh, HIDs. We put a JDM grill in it. And the front bumper here, as most of you with a keen eye will see, this is an 0304 bumper on an 02 because I don't like the 2000 to 2002 bumper. It's round, it's bulbous, and doesn't look as sleek as the 0304. Yes, we got some clear coat peeling here. This fender was repainted before I bought the car. We got some scuffs on the used front bumper. Never painted it once I got it. We got some fade here on this side of the car because this is the last, the roof and this that hasn't been repainted. 
we've got chrome showing on both sides because the black uh, vinyl sticky sticker that Subaru put to black out that has peeled off and there's no replacement. We've got some sunburn on the roof rack. You know, it is what it is. It's a 300,000 mile, 20 year old car. We got some scratches. We got some cracking of tail lights, but I have brand new tail lights to put in here. It's just, uh, you know what it is. Overall still, I think it's a very clean car. Looking at the interior, again, did not even vacuum this, have not cleaned it, haven't even removed my stuff from it. This is how I ride around. Fairly well, this interior is held up. The only main, only big issue is uh, the leather on the driver's seat. It's got quite a bit of wear there from my big butt sliding across it in and out. And uh, we also put a WRX Momo airbag in there with the factory LL Bean wood grain steering wheel. And uh, I mentioned this in the first video about this dash pad. We replaced it once, but it's already starting to crack again uh, just from UV. And uh, some of you that have an O2 will know that uh, they didn't have this. Now I've added a third cup holder. I've got the pop-up one, and then I got the two down here. And uh, yeah, I had an STI key cut for my old Outback. And yes, you can have a STI key cut for your early 2000 Subaru as well. All right, guys, so as we saw, this car, even with having 300,000 miles on it and a lot of factory components, is still in pretty daggum good shape, in my opinion, and is fairly safe to go down the road, uh, less those tires that I really need to address sooner than later. So, aside from having to change that harmonic uh, balancer, which I'm gonna put as zero dollars because I already had one laying around, let's look at the numbers again really quickly. So, in the last video, the total was $4,904 that I'd put in the car since purchase in September or August of 2013 until September of 2020. Since that video, we put a $100 battery and a $25 alternator on there bringing the total up to $5,029 for 69,000 miles worth of driving and nine years of ownership. When we do the math on that, that breaks down to right at seven cents per mile this car has cost me over that nine years, or a grand total cost of about $37 per month to own it and drive it. And that is not figuring in gasoline, of course. So now what does the car need to basically be tip top shape, 100% mechanically sound, not so much cosmetically, because we do have some paint peeling on the driver's side uh, fender over there. We got some clear coat damage and we have some sun fade on the roof and on the driver and passenger door on uh, the car as well. There's a little ding back there. You know, it's not perfect. So tires. For a set of four Michelin tires, which is what I normally run on all of my cars, looking at about $600 from Tire Rack. For the end links, front and back, for the sway bars, we're looking at about $130. For the front and rear sway bar bushings, we're looking at about 50 bucks. For struts all the way around, that's expensive and well needed. Uh, about $600 between the actual shock absorbers, the perches, for the springs, the isolators, the rubber pieces, and for the strut mounts. And then for that inner tie rod boot, about 20 bucks from Subaru. That brings us to $1,300. As far as the engine reseal, gaskets, all that, I figure about a grand will do it. So about $2,300 more I need to put in this car to have it 100% mechanically sound, barring a couple of knickknacks here and there. So that would bring us up to a total of $7,329, which again, I think is very reasonable for a car that cost me $500. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, Mr. Subaru, why would you keep pouring all that money into a 20 year old car with 300,000 miles? That seems like you're just pouring your money down the drain. Why don't you go and buy a brand new Subaru? So let's run the numbers on that really quickly as a comparison. So to get another Outback that is comparable to this LL Bean from 2002, we'd be looking at a touring model and an XT model because 
For the touring for the L.L. Bean brown leather interior, we'd be getting the touring package for the upscale. And for the 3 liter H6 that's no longer available, we'd be looking at the new FA24F 2.4 turbo in the XT model. So comparably to this would be that car. Now, built in price the way I would want it and matching the color scheme of this car, which unfortunately we can't do two-tone anymore, Subaru, thanks for letting me down. Uh, that car comes to a total of $44,756. Now, putting down no money, financing for 60 months with my credit score, that works out to about $865 a month for a car payment, which would be $10,380 for one year in car payments. Being here in South Carolina, I have to pay property tax on my vehicles every year. This car is $19 a year. That new Outback would be $980 a year for the first few years. So that would bring our operational cost up just in payments and taxes to $11,360 for that Outback. And again, no purchase of gasoline and no maintenance in that as well. A lot of it will be covered under warranty, but there's still gonna be oil changes and other things that come out of pocket with that new vehicle we're not even gonna figure in. So that works out too, if we're driving about 14,000 miles a year, which is about the national average, about 80 cents a mile to run that vehicle compared to seven cents a mile to run this vehicle. Guys, it's pretty cut, clear, and obvious at $865 a month, for a brand new one or $46 a month for this one. As long as the wheels are turning on this thing and it starts when I turn on the ignition switch and that air conditioning blows ice cold, there's no reason for me to upgrade to a newer vehicle. Not even to get into the whole issues with the new FA24F or all the issues with the touchscreens and the Outbacks or all that other stuff that would be the headache of going back and forth to the dealership for warranty repairs. Why would I want to do that to myself? This will get me from point A to point B and sometimes to point C, just like a brand new car will, but for a much lower price tag. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you all in the next one.